So this controller is making another appearance for today's video. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show you a board I designed. It's kind of like a mod almost or an add-on for Xbox One controllers. Um, and as the title gave it away, it is a lithium-ion rechargeable battery pack. Uh, this is my board right here that I designed. And underneath that is a lithium-ion battery that I had lying around that I just kind of made to fit inside the controller. Um, before I go over everything, I'm just going to show you a few clips on how I installed this because it wasn't as easy as it looks. Um, it fits perfectly in here now, but I had to do some stuff to make it fit. Uh, as you can see, there are a few wires here, so I had to solder some stuff. So I'll show you those clips now, and we'll talk more about this after that. So following up on those clips, you can see that it wasn't really easy to install. Um, overall, it only took about maybe 20-30 minutes to do, but I had modified the controller cavity a bit to fit this battery. Um, this actually wasn't even the battery I wanted to use. I wanted to use one of these cells, which is a lot bigger. Oops, it's got messy. Uh, one of these cells, which is a lot bigger. I've, I've salvaged um, probably 24 of these lithium ion cells and I believe they're 1800 milliamp hours um, and I wanted to use this one originally but I didn't because all the ones I have on hand that are taken out of the uh, components I've taken them out of are actually dead. This one's at one volt and it refuses to charge up so I'm not going to use this. I don't feel like uh, salvaging any more of them right now so I'd use this little camera battery right here which is a Nikon lithium ion battery. It's 700 milliamp hours and it's lasted me a long time on one charge so I'm not too displeased with it. But maybe in the next video I'll use one of these. This one's just all skanky because it's just been sitting on the floor. Um, but yeah, I wanted to use one of these ones and it would fit inside the cavity as well. But the cavity would need to be further modified in order to fit this battery. So in the end, I'm kind of happy I used this Nikon battery for now. But I had to hack away some plastic, solder up a few wires. It wasn't the hardest thing to do. It's actually kind of easy and, and fun, but it was tedious in some parts. Uh, but uh, right now I want to explain what this board does, what I wanted it to originally do, and what I hope to accomplish in the future. Um, so first I'm going to explain what the board does uh, in the path of the, like what I wanted it to do. Uh, so I'll start off that way. It's not doing what I wanted, to, wanted it to do originally now. I had to modify it to make it work after I've discovered a few things, but the idea was to have uh, this right here charged with lithium ion battery. It's a 5 pin charge controller IC. Um, it only charges the battery, it doesn't discharge it, so in the future I want to get a better battery management IC. Um, right here is a little blue LED. This turns on letting you know the battery is charging and it turns off when the battery is charged. Right here is a buck boost IC. It outputs a stable 3.3 volts. Um, that 3.3 volts was supposed to be fed to this over here, which is my rapid fire. Uh, modification circuitry over here and then right here to the CON plus this was actually supposed to be the output to the controller uh, which is 3.3 volts so my idea was to have 3.3 volts going directly to the controller at all times so kind of emulate having a full battery at all times um, but all of that was kind of swept under the rug after soldering this up and playing with it for about 10 minutes. Because one thing I noticed almost immediately is that this buck boost IC, even though it says in the data sheet it can handle up to 800 milliamps output, it gets insanely hot under 500 milliamps, I think it was. Um, I actually think it was like 497 milliamps, so it got really hot. Uh, I even put a heat sink on it and messed around with the values of components I had, um, and it was still unbearably hot. So I kind of bypass that right now and uh, I'm not including it in the future boards because it's, it's it's an expensive IC. I think it's like three dollars for just this chip, maybe two dollars on Mauser, which doesn't sound like much but when you're ordering in multiple quantities, um, especially bulk order, uh, for three boards that's six dollars and if you're doing it you know every couple of months that adds up quite a bit. So uh, I'm not sad that I'm cutting that out because it's an expensive IC. The components for it add up too. Um, so the idea was to have the battery just discharged through that through these two pads right here, S1 and S2. Basically just a switch and once you close it, the voltage from the battery drains through this IC, supplying power to the rapid fire chip and the controller itself. As you can see, I don't have the rapid fire chip transistors installed. Uh, I didn't install the rapid fire chip quite yet. I don't plan on doing it with this controller. I'm just testing the battery capabilities of it. I might add the rapid fire later on. Right now, I just don't really care because I don't use it that much to justify it. I, I basically don't want to 
mess up this wood grain controller, so I'm not going to do that anytime soon. Um, so that's what I wanted this, this board to do. Unfortunately, after playing with it for 10 minutes, I realized it got too hot to kind of go with that direction. So I had to change it up a bit, and I started experimenting with this controller and realized that I can actually power this controller using a 4.2 volt signal from my DC power supply um, at about 500 milliamps uh, directly to the battery cavity without damaging the controller. So once I realized that, I kind of realized that this, this uh, charge controller I see, or a buck boost IC was just irrelevant at that point. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually discharging the battery directly into the Xbox One controller and you can power it on using the Xbox Home button instead of a switch that would have been mounted uh, probably on the battery door somewhere. So that's kind of a nice, nicer alternative. It's more clean that way. Um, so right here we have some wiring. I'll explain that right now. Right here is our 5 volt input wiring. Uh, this is just tied in parallel with the 5 volts coming in from the micro USB that charges the battery up and it also, uh, yeah, it just charges the battery up. There's nothing going on with that. The negative 5 volt is tied into ground over here. Right here is our positive 3 volt. This would have been the switch 1 going to switch 2, but it's just going right to the positive tab of the Xbox One controller. I'm not too sure if you can see that on the camera. I oh, probably could. I just soldered it directly to that. And I also have the ground wire for the 5 volts soldered right there. And the ground for the battery is coming in right here. And the ground for, or the positive signal for the battery is coming in right here. And the negative 5 volts is just going in right there. And that's all it takes to get grounded to the controller, just one wire. Um, so these two wires are for the battery. This is for the 5 volt input. This is for the battery output. And this is a shared ground between the two. That's just going directly to the negative tab right there. Um, so yeah, I had to change it up a bit to kind of accommodate my findings with it. Because once I saw that it produced that much heat, unbearable to touch, even with the heat sink, I had to come up with something else. And I didn't want to scrap this design completely because I spent maybe $8 for the boards from Osh Park and about $15 or $20 on parts which sounds kind of insane. Uh, $8 for the boards, $15 for parts, and that's just enough parts to populate one board. It sounds kind of insane, especially when I said I don't want to buy a rechargeable battery pack that retails for $30. Bucks. Um, so I'm getting pretty close to that price point just based on my own uh, purchases, not even including the labor. So that kind of sucks, but my Justification for that is I like making stuff and I like seeing what I can do with this design um, because if I were to go out and buy a battery pack from Target and it were to just stop working, what am I going to do about it? I can't do anything about it. could return it, but there's probably a policy, warranties would be voided, all that fun stuff. Uh, with this, I get to mess around with it. I'm responsible for everything. If something breaks, I know why. And uh, me having access to the battery means I can change the battery whenever I want um, to these guys right here when I want to. So there's there's unlimited possibilities with doing it yourself rather than buying it. Um, especially the cheaper ones I saw were NICAD, and those suck. So I I'm just staying away from those. Uh, so I feel like this alternative is still better, even though the pricing is getting close to what I didn't want to spend. Um, in the future, I'm going to be spending more money on this design and hopefully selling it as a kit or maybe as a mod for people. Um, the board's going to be probably half the size once I cut out the 3.3 volt buck boost IC stuff and um, overall more modular, I think. So when we plug it in, got a micro USB cable right here. Uh, the batteries should be close to fully charged when we plug it in. I can, there we go. Uh, blue LED lights up. That's telling us the battery is charging in about maybe 20 minutes. It'll start to uh, kind of blink and pulsate, and then in another like five minutes after that, it'll just turn off completely. That lets us know the battery is charged. I could have added another LED to let us know the battery is charged, but that means uh, more money. So I just kind of kept it to this one because I know what it means. And um, I drilled a tiny hole in the battery door so you can see the LED shining through it. Um, yeah, so it works pretty great. Um, like I said, I'm working on another design as we speak, so more videos of this project will come out. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys this project that I've been working on. Um, I decided to record this a few seconds after last minute, so I missed a lot of stuff I would love to have discussed, but just kind of uh, slipped away from me, I guess. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what you think of this project, um, suggestions for it. Uh, battery ideas because the space is limited so you can't really use a gigantic capacity battery 700 milliamps is what I can fit in there right now 1.8 is what I can fit in there and I really don't feel like spending maybe 
you know, five dollars more than batteries. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to hear your input on this, whether or not you would like this mod. Um, I personally enjoy it because I don't have to buy AA batteries anymore, and that that alone for me is enough. Uh, cause I, that's why I like wired controllers because you don't have to buy batteries. So this is a nice alternative. And as you can see, the LEDs are on, and uh, the one good way to see how good the battery is or how alive the battery is is based on these LEDs. Right now, they're bright, really bright. So that kind of shows that the uh, battery is fully charged because it's tapped in right into it. Once the battery starts dying, the red on these will um, drop because they draw more current. Um, so yeah, uh, so expect more videos in the future for this project. I plan on working on the other design a bit more and uh, getting the boards in from Osh Park in a couple of weeks and I'll upload from there. Um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments and input. Uh, based on this project in the comments below, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.